Hello and welcome to the next video in our series where we are exploring the VBA program language. In today's video, we are going to cover the topic of data types. So data types are related to variables. We know that variables are containers that we can create in our programs and store certain pieces of information in there and then we can label those containers. Well, something else we can do with variables is we can specify the type of information that we have in that container. And we specify it using data types. So when we specify the data type, we're telling the computer program what type of information is in that variable. And that kind of has implications down the road because it basically sets the stage on what kind of operations we can perform on that particular variable. So let's just jump right into it and start exploring data types. So what are data types? Well, I have a definition on the left-hand side. We're going to read through it, and we're just going to discuss a couple of key points. So a data type is an attribute of data which gives direction to the compiler on how the programmer plans to use the data. Once we define the data type, we set the stage for what type of operations we can perform on the data. So this is important. We have a container. We've now defined what type of information is in that container. And really what that is doing for us is it's now going to say, hey, now that we know what's in there, these are the type of operations that we can perform on it. And so it's related to these ideas called operators. And what we'll find is that certain operators can only be used on certain data types or if they can be used on multiple data types they have very different outcomes when we use them on different data types and so this will come become a little bit more clear when we explain it in the next video where i focus entirely on, on operators but all we need to know at this juncture is that the data type is really just setting the stage it's telling the computer how we're planning to use this information and what type of operations we want to perform on this information. Something else that we have to talk about when we're talking about data types is bytes. Different data types take up different amount of memory in our computer. And we can think of this quote unquote amount of memory as the number of bytes a particular data type has. So again, different data types, they take up different amount of memory in our computer. We will see this has an implication with the overall speed of our program. I'll explain it in more detail later, but at this point, all we need to know is that different data types take up different amount of memory and that this can have an implication in our program. So why are data types important? So why are they important? Well, I like to frame it in this kind of problem solution context. So say, for example, I have two pieces of information. I have a number, 123, and a collection of characters, so a string of text, A, B, C. Now, from our perspective, from a human being's perspective, we can look at these two pieces of information and we can clearly distinguish a difference. So we can tell that one of them is a numerical value and one of them is a collection of characters or a string. But for a computer, it's not so clear. If I show these two pieces of information to a computer, it will not be able to distinguish what type of information it's looking at. And so we need to create a framework where we can communicate with the computer and say, hey, the piece of information that you're looking at, this is the type of information it is. That's where data types come into play. Data types provide that framework. It provides that framework where we can talk to the computer and we can tell it, hey, the piece of information that you're looking at currently is a number or the type of information that you're currently looking at is a string. And now that you know what type of information you're looking at, these are the type of operations you can now perform on that particular piece of information. So again, all we're talking about is a framework and data types is providing us a new framework that we didn't have before. Data types and program speed. This is also important. The number of bytes a particular data type has is important because it has an overall impact on the performance of our VBA scripts. The reason why is because the number of bytes and the overall speed of our application are inversely related. 
In other words, as the number of bytes increases in our script, the longer our scripts take to run. So this has an implication. As much as we would like to always default to the VBA default data type, there is an implication to it. It takes up a bunch of memory. And if we take up too much memory, we'll find that our programs will take a very long time to run and we don't want that to happen. We want our programs to run fast and smoothly. And so we need to be aware of the data types that we're using in our program and the implications of using those particular data types. Now I've provided a table that goes over all the different data types that we have in VBA. And we're gonna go in the VBA editor and see all these data types in action. But right now we have the data type, the amount of memory allocation that it takes, and then the last column is the character type. We use the character type when we want to declare variables in a more shorthand notation, but still define the data type. That will become more clear when we look at an example. So now that we've talked about data types, let's look at them in the VBA environment. Okay, so I'm currently in my Excel VBA editor, and we're just gonna walk through the different data types and just one by one look at them. So the first one that we're gonna look at is the variant data type. So this is the default data type in VBA. So anytime you create a variable and you do not define the data type, it will default to variant. That's all fine and dandy, but the variant data type does come pretty costly. It takes 16 to 22 bytes of memory. It's not necessarily a bad data type, but we just wanna use it sparingly and we wanna use it in the correct situations. Um, the nice thing about the variant data type is it does actually have the ability to handle some special value. So we can store an empty value in a variant data type. I can store error values the nothing value and the null value. So these are all kind of special values that we can store in a variant data type. Um, so it is useful in, a, in very particular situations, but we wanna use it in those particular situations. Keep in mind, an empty value just means that there is no, that no value has been assigned to the variable. Errors, that's just related to VBA errors. We can actually store those errors in a variant data type. Nothing, this is related to objects. Nothing just means that the object hasn't been initialized yet. Uh, so it's in this uninitialized state. And then finally, null is just simply the absent of data. So that's all that means. The next one that we're gonna talk about is the byte data type. It takes up one byte of memory and has a range of zero to 255. Here I am declaring a byte variable with the data type byte and simply assigning a value to it. So not too complicated. The next data type is Boolean. So a Boolean data type can contain either a true or false expression. So in this situation, I have stored a true value. And then in the next example, I have stored a false value. So it takes up two bytes of memory and it can store either true or false in a variable. So it's very useful when we do things like if statements and conditional programming. So this will kind of, again, become more clear when we use the example with it. The next one that we're gonna talk about is the currency data type. It takes up eight bytes of memory. Uh, why would we wanna use a currency data type? Well, we tend to use it in financial transaction where precision is of the utmost importance. That is because the currency data type is exact. So you always have four decimal places to the right and you can have up to this many characters to the left of the decimal point. So it comes in handy when we are working with financial transaction and we wanna make sure that our numbers are exact and not rounded. We'll find that with other data types, they are rounded, so we don't wanna do that. In this situation, I am declaring a currency data type and then assigning a value to it. If I wanted to do a more shorthand notation, I could simply just pass through the current variable name, the at symbol, and then assign a value to it. This is called using the character type method. So I pass through the character type and this is kind of the same as writing this line. So it's declaring this variable as a currency data type. So it's like we've combined these two lines into one. Just because it's a lot less lines of code doesn't mean we should do it. This I personally believe is more easier to follow. If somebody is new to VBA and they see that they're gonna be very lost very quickly and they're not gonna understand what your script is doing. So even though you can use this, I don't necessarily encourage you to use it. I would still stick with the old fashioned way of breaking it into two lines. The next one that we're gonna talk about is the date data type. 
So that has an allocation of eight bytes of memory. And with this one, it comes in two different ranges. So with the actual date itself, we can have a range anywhere from January 1st, 100 to December 31st, 9,999. And we can have a time between this to 2359.59. I can store just a date in a date data type. So I can either pass through the serial number of that date or I can pass through the literal value. Now, I don't know about you, I can't remember the serial numbers for dates, so I choose to use the literal method. If I use the literal method, I wanna make sure that I pass a number sign before and after the actual date itself. Keep in mind, all the serial numbers representing is the date 12 one 2018 Can also store times in date data types. Here I'm storing the time 1 p.m., and here I am doing it in a more literal fashion. Now, we can also store date time values, so a combination of a date and a time. So in this example, I'm storing a date time value in a serial fashion, and then I'm also doing it in a literal fashion. So we can store date time values. If you provide a negative number, that's like going backwards in time. So if I pass through a negative one, that will be considered December 30th, 1899. So larger the negative number, the more further back in time you're going. We also have decimal data types. This is a subclass of the variant data type, and it's actually the largest number I think we can actually store in VBA. So largest number of characters that we can have in a row that represent a number. In order to leverage the decimal data type, we have to do a couple extra steps. The first one is we have to declare the variable as a variant first, store the value in that variable, and then call the VBA function convert to decimal, and then pass through the variable. So now, after this point, it is a decimal data type in VBA. So we can use the decimal data type, we just have to do it in multiple steps. The next one is the double data type takes up eight bytes. This is the range that we're working with. Here I am declaring a double and assigning a value to it. And here I am using the character type method. Integer data type, two bytes, that's the range. Here I am declaring it. Here I am using the character type method. I have a long data type, so that's just a longer range of numbers. Here I am declaring it, assigning a value to it, and then using the character type method. I also have a long, long data type, so that just represents an even longer range of numbers. However, it is only valid on 64-bit platforms. So if you're running on 32-bit version of Windows, you cannot use it. It takes eight bytes of memory. Here I am declaring a long, long data type and assigning a value to it. If you write long numbers, it will pass through a number sign at the end of it. Next, I have the long pointer data type. This is a more flexible data type because it changes depending on the platform we're on. It takes up eight bytes, still has a very good range. However, if I'm on a 32-bit version platform, it becomes a long data type. And if I'm on a 64-bit platform, it becomes a long, long data type. So it changes depending on the platform that you're on. So it's a flexible data type. The next one is the object data type. It takes up four bytes of memory, doesn't have a range. In order to use the, range, the object data type, we first declare our variable as an object. We then use the set keyword, pass through the variable name, and then assign the appropriate object to it. We will talk about objects in so much detail in a later video because they are an important concept in VBA. At this juncture, all we need to know is that there is an object data type and if we want to use that object data type, we have to use the set keyword and then assign the object to it. Next one is the single data type. It takes up four bytes of memory. This is the range that we're working with. Here I am declaring a single data type. And here I am using the character type method, so the exclamation mark. Next one is the string data type. That comes in two flavors, variable and fixed. If I'm using a variable string, it's 10 bytes of memory plus the length of the string. If I'm using a fixed string, it's the length of the string. 
The range for a variable string is 0 to approximately 2 billion characters, and for a fixed string, it's 1 to approximately 65,400. Now, keep in mind with the fixed string, if you pass through 100 characters, it will add extra spaces to the end of that string. It's because it will always have 65,400 characters. Now, if you go above 65,400 characters, it will truncate that string. So if you go 65,401, it will take off that last character. So keep that in mind. I don't use fixed strings that often. I use pretty much only variable strings. Here I am declaring a string variable and assigning a value to it. And here I am using the character type method, so the dollar sign. The final, final data type that we're going to talk about is the user defined data type. So VBA does give us the ability to create our own data types, but because of that, its allocation will vary and its ranges will vary. To create our own user defined data type, we call the type keyword, and then we close it off with the end type statement. We pass through the name of our data type, and then we can add different fields to our user defined type. So I can have multiple fields. They don't have to be called field one or field two. They can be Bob, Sarah, and John, doesn't matter. You pass through the field as keyword and then the particular data type that you want to assign to that field. You can do regular data types, you can use arrays, and you can even use, if you so choose, previously defined user defined data types. So this is kind of a complex concept to grasp. It's just easier to understand it in an example. So we will do that at a later point in the videos. But at this point, just know that it exists and you do have the ability, if you so choose, to create your own user-defined data types. So that does it for today's video. Again, all we did is we went over data types and we saw the different data types that exist within VBA. If you have any questions related to data types, you know, how they work or, you know, just certain rules that we need to follow with them, please put them down in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you and answer them for you. And if you could, please make sure to like the video so that way it's easier for other people to find. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates as we release new videos on different topics. So thank you again for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks again.